The orcas are one of the fastest marine mammals. Size, strength, and their torpedo-like shape make them very fast underwater. They can travel at speeds of almost 30 miles per hour. This is a skeleton of an 18-foot juvenile male orca, or a killer whale, and he washed up dead in Point Reyes National Seashore in November of 2011. And then we collected the skeleton for the museum for our research collection. We're part of the Marine Mammal Stranding Network, which is a national network, and our coordinator received a call from the general public. When a dead marine mammal washes up on shore, it's important to get that data into the national database and into our database here. So we keep records of any marine mammal that washes up in the area that we respond to, which is Bodega Bay in the north to Año Nuevo in the south. For this orca, we just took the typical information that we would on a cetacean, a whale or dolphin. And then we also want to do a necropsy. Orcas have a saddle patch, which is a white patch behind their dorsal fin. And they also sometimes have different nicks and things in their dorsal fins. So I've made sure to take those images and I sent those to the orca researchers and they were able to identify him by his saddle patch and his dorsal fin shape as 0319. And they had recorded him several times off of Canada and once in Alaska during their studies of orcas. And they knew that he was part of the offshore ecotype based on the group that he lived with. There are three types of orcas, resident, transient, and offshore ecotypes. The southern residents, which are an endangered species, are found off of Washington and British Columbia, and they primarily eat salmon. The transients are the orcas that we see most often down here in California. They travel up and down the coast, and their primary food source is sea lions and other marine mammals. And then the offshores are an ecotype that are not very well known because of where they're found. They travel in much larger groups. We didn't know until just recently what their primary food source is, but now it seems to be sharks. At first, we were not going to collect the entire skeleton because it was in such a difficult location. Once we learned that this was an offshore ecotype, we knew that we should collect the whole skeleton because it would be really valuable to scientists all over the world. So that's why we made the effort to get the entire skeleton off the beach. To get to the orca involved a quarter of a mile hike on a nice flat trail, <laughs> then a hike along a grassy hill slope down a very steep dirt trail and it, over an intertidal area that was tide dependent. It took us five visits and we had to take him in pieces off of the beach and carry parts up that long trail. The skull was the most difficult part to remove from the beach because it was all one piece. It probably weighed close to 200 pounds. Once it came here to the academy, we put the bones into a process called maceration, which is basically soaking them in water, and the bacteria in the water will degrade any remaining tissue over time until you have nice, clean bones. We took the flippers off intact from the beach. One, because we were afraid of losing the teeny tiny finger bones that are in there. And number two, because we wanted to take digital images of the flipper before we remove the skin. So we took x-rays and CT scans so that we can get all of the bones correct in the final articulated skeleton. We're working with Lee Post. He's built many whale skeletons in his lifetime and he'll work with a group of our volunteers to articulate this orca's skeleton. Over the course of the next six weeks, each little section will be put together until we have a complete orca skeleton. Now that the skeleton is available for researchers, scientists from around the world can come and use it for any study that they are interested in. We archive tissue samples, so those are available for any genetic studies that researchers might use. There was a lot of information gained just from this one individual.